In this exercise, we're going to design a furnace control, a thermostat for this home, where we're just gonna have on-off control. So typically you have these actuators in heating or cooling systems, like an air conditioning or a heater, that can just be on-off. And for model predictive control applications, where we're looking forward over this horizon, we want to be able to use these types of actuators that are going to be zero for off and one for on. And so the way we program that in optimization or with model predictive control is to use these binary variables. Now, if you just want to program logic, so for example, in an actual thermostat, they don't run model predictive control. It's just some simple logic. If you get over this range, you turn off and if you get under this range, you turn on. And it just keeps the, the temperature of the home within a certain dead band. Now, we're gonna uh, create this application with model predictive control instead. So let's just consider a scenario where you have a home that is at 40 degrees Fahrenheit, that's about 4.4 degrees Celsius. And you wanna heat that home up okay, to a comfortable range, okay, so uninhabited during the winter, and then you come home, you wanna be able to heat it up, and you wanna be able to create this uh, predictive model of how fast this uh, temperature is going to rise when the heater is on. So the heater is gonna turn on, and then at a certain point, it will turn off, okay, just to keep you within this range. And then if it gets too low, it will then turn on again. So let's go ahead and just review how to do this. We have this home, uh, and this initial condition. Let's just say if you left the heater on indefinitely, it would get up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So therefore, we can have a gain. That's going to be our output over our input. That's going to be equal to 100 degrees Fahrenheit minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit divided by one minus zero. And that's going to be equal to 60. All right, now maybe it takes about 120 minutes starting from that initial cold temperature to get up to that uh, range or 63% of 100 degrees. Then we'd say our time constant for this is 120 minutes. Okay, so we have that information. Um, we want to be able to simulate this for about two and a half hours to get within 70 degrees Fahrenheit to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So 70 degrees Fahrenheit is about 21 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we have this target. So, um, you know, down to about 20, I'll put 20 degrees Celsius here. Okay, so somewhere within that range, that's going to be our dead band where we say we want to be able to keep the temperature. And the reason why we keep that dead band there is because we don't want this furnace cycling on and off every 10 to 15 seconds. We want to not have this actuator wear out and through the thermal cycling or just the inconvenience of having it turn on and off and the noise and other things that that makes um, from starting up the heater. So. Uh, let's go ahead and just design this uh, model predictive control application. I'm going to step through the code with you. This is going to be in Python Gecko. And what we want to do first of all is just from Gecko, we'll import Gecko. And you can just pip install Gecko if you don't have it. Okay, we'll get PyPlot as well, just to be able to visualize the solution. And then we're going to create our new Gecko model. Okay, use remote equals false if you want to solve it locally without an internet connection. Then we're going to create our time points. I'll create these as non-uniform time points up to this two and a half hour range. These are going to be in minutes here because our time constant is also going to be in minutes as well. So let's go out to, okay, there's one and a half at 90 minutes. And we're just going to go a few more. And I've just spaced these by... Uh, increments of five. Okay, initially I have an increment of one. So that's going to be the cycle time of our controller. Every one minute it's going to make a new decision whether it turns on or off. 
Now we're going to change some solver options. This is going to be using the AP Opt solver. And I need to change some solver options just so it um, doesn't explore all the solutions. Mixed integer, nonlinear programming problems, or in this case, it's going to be a mixed integer linear programming problem. It can take a lot longer if you don't adjust some of these options. Um, and in particular, the gap tolerance is an important one. Also, you can look at the max iterations. I put that fairly high. I didn't want that to, uh, to be the limitation. And we'll include a couple others here as well. So let's go ahead and do uh, max iterations with integer solution as well. I'll put that at 5,000. Okay, so here we have m.options.solver equals one. That's the APOP solver. We'll switch it to six for I mode. That's going to be model predictive control. And we'll have some of our parameters. There's our KP is going to be 60. Okay, and then tau P is 120. And then our initial temperature is 40. And then we're going to create uh, the heater binary variable. Okay, and that is going to be an MV, an integer, and we're going to say it's true uh, between 0 and 1. So that creates an integer variable. We'll put a D cost on it, a delta cost. That's some move suppression so that it doesn't move it if it's within that dead band. And then we'll set its status equal to on. And then we'll have our controlled variable. This is going to be our temperature. And we'll set the initial condition equal to T0. And then set point high and set point low. We'll set our range for those. And then I'll turn our status on. And that will say to the optimizer that we want to include it in the objective. Now, trajectory initialization, that's just a pure dead band. Now we'll put our first order equation. This is just based on the gain and the time constant. We'll have our tau times. And this is going to be our temperature, a derivative with respect to time. And then we subtract on the other side t minus t naught plus kp times u. That's the first order equation with a gain and a time constant. Then we'll solve the mixed integer linear programming problem and then we'll plot the solution. Okay, so as this is uh, finishing, I'll just go ahead and run this and we'll look at the solution. Um, okay, so I'll open it up with IDLE as well. And then we'll run it. We're going to plot, you know, set point high, set point low, just to be able to see those on the plot, how close it's getting to the solution. And I'll solve this with uh, Python 3.11. So I'll go ahead and just start this running. Um, and it's going to take a little bit of time to uh, finish. Now you can see the iteration summary here. Okay, I'll make this just a little bit just a little bit bigger so we can see it, okay? And here is the solution right here. So you can see just it's finishing just the last uh, subplot here. And you can see the initial condition here starts at 40 and then goes uh, it goes up into this range of 70 to 68. You can see that the actuator, the furnace on off is shown there and um, Okay, you can see that it arrived at a successful solution as well. You could see, you know, it found some integer solutions early on, but the gap tolerance was too large. And it continued iterating until it found a gap tolerance, um, you know, with something within what we had specified. And so at that point, it returned the successful solution. And there you could see the total objective and the solution time that it took. Okay, so let me just mark this up just a little bit more um, here on the solution. I just pasted it here. And one of the things that we want to see is that, um, you know, the actuator here, it stays on until it gets up into this range between the upper and the lower. And it also, we don't see any overshoot right here where it goes above that range and then you can see it it figures out how much it needs to turn on and off and at what intervals it needs to do that so that uh, you stay within this comfort region right here the desirable temperature range now it could 
do something like where it chatters on and off much more frequently and you could have much tighter control here within maybe to a specified temperature of 68 for example if you wanted to be able to save some energy for the building you know just keep it right at that minimum comfort level uh, so you don't overheat uh, the space and then uh, but it would but this right here would also wear out the actuator okay the thermal cycling the blowers other things turning on and off very frequently just to be able to maintain that lower temperature bound so for that reason we set this range right here as a type of move suppression now the other way that we saw was through that d cost parameter that's another way to do move suppression but on the manipulated variable but this dead band dead band is a method of move suppression okay but you're using the controlled variable instead of the manipulated variable okay so let me just go ahead and show you the website where you can find the source code for this so the web address is right here i'll put that also in the description of the video and there are also other benchmark problems that are available that are similar to this one for discrete variables and I'll add a few more to this as well. So you can come down here and see a double tank control, load code, Volterra fishing problem, and then here we have the furnace control link right here as well. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Love to hear your comments or observations about other mixed integer optimal control problems.